Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Linux running on the all-new Odroid H3 Plus from Hard Kernel. Now, if you're not familiar with this single board computer, it's brand new to the market and uses an x86 CPU. And actually, they're offering two different models. I've got the Plus model here, but they have the H3. The Plus is definitely the way to go because we've got a quad-core 3.3 gigahertz CPU in this unit. And it will run Windows. I have made one other video with the H3 Plus using Windows 11, and performance is great for a small board like this. But, you know, since then, I've had a lot of people ask about Linux, and I actually got the accessories in that I wanted to pick up from Hard Kernel. Like the case, they also sell a fan, and by the way, the case is $10. At first, I thought it was going to be an acrylic case, but it looks like it's made out of PCB. I know that's a little odd. It's not metal. And it's not acrylic. It's kind of weird the way this is set up. But, you know, it's actually a really sturdy case. So if you needed something to protect the H3, you can always order one of these. And I've just installed it on the other unit that I have. But, you know, for me, I don't mind having kind of a bare bones PCB sitting on the table. And I've actually added a fan to mine. I've got a little standoff and a Noctua fan. Works out perfectly fine. From the BIOS, you can actually adjust the fan curve when it comes on and everything like that. And in max performance mode, which I'm going to show you how to get to in just a second, you probably want to get a fan. And that's because when we go to unlimited mode, we're actually going to be able to boost the 3.3 gigahertz on all four cores in this, basically indefinitely, as long as we don't thermal throttle. And even if you're using a cheat fan on this thing, you're not going to hear it because all it needs is just a little bit of air passing over that big heatsink on the H3 to keep it nice and cool. So real quick, before we get into testing, I wanted to give you a rundown on the specs here. We've got the Intel Pentium Silver N6005 CPU, 4 cores, 4 threads, up to 3.3 GHz. We've got the built-in Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units. It will support up to 64GB of SODIMM RAM, DDR4 running at 2933MHz. I've got 16 gigabytes running in dual channel right now, and when it comes to storage, this does support an NVMe SSD, an eMMC module, or you could even boot from a SATA drive if you want to. 2.5 or 3.5 will work. It's got two SATA ports on the board. Alright, so as soon as you boot this thing up, go ahead and press delete on your keyboard. It's going to bring us right into the BIOS. Power and performance. We want to go to CPU performance, and we're going to find the power limit for. So out of the box, this is going to be set to 30. We want to set this to zero. And basically what this does is allow us to run the CPU here at 16 watts instead of 10 watts. That way it'll boost up on the GPU and the CPU, like I mentioned, indefinitely as long as you can keep it cool enough. And it does up performance quite a bit. Once you have that set, make sure you save the settings and you're going to get some really great performance at the Odroid H3+. Plus. So you probably already know that we're going to be testing out Pop! OS on the H3 today. Now, when it comes to these little boards, I usually run Manjaro, an Arch-based distro, but I've been running that a lot on a bunch of different systems, so I figured I'd go with something a little bit different. I could have went with a stock Ubuntu build, but you know, I really do like the look of Pop! OS, and it's very user-friendly. So I've had this up and running on the H3 Plus for a couple of days, and it's worked out really well. Now with this H3, we don't get Wi-Fi or Bluetooth built in. You can always use a dongle, but we do have two 2.5 gigabit ports on this unit. So I've got Ethernet plugged in right now, and it's very snappy with Pop! OS. In this video, we're going to take a look at how this performs on the H3 Plus. We're also going to test out some 4K video playback, some gaming, and some emulation. So I've got some PSP, some PS2, some Wii, and GameCube that I want to test out. Okay, so far performance has actually been really great here. I will go ahead and run NeoFetch so you can get a better look at this. As you can see, Pop! OS 22.04, we're on the H3+, Plus, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that Pentium Silver N6005. We've got four cores, no extra threads, but from the BIOS, we were able to kind of set this up in maximum performance mode. Now, when it comes to Pop! OS or basically any other Linux operating system, we can always change the CPU governor from terminal. So if you wanted to go on demand, power save, or performance, it's pretty easy to do. But there are also applications that allow us to do this. So this is just a little CPU frequency setting app. So we can set this up for the performance governor. And we can also set the max clock. We can set the minimum clock here. I'm just set at 3.3, all cores, performance mode. And that's the way I personally like to run this. I've got that little fan on here, so it's not going to thermal throttle. And with those settings there, this thing is pretty snappy. Now, I did run Geekbench 5 just to give you a look here. 
Single core, 775, multi, 2600. So obviously we're not scoring as much as a high performance gaming machine would, but that's not what we're working with here. We've got a small single board computer with a quad core x86 CPU, and it's actually perfect for web browsing, video playback, document editing, you could do some photo editing on this unit. And with something like Pop OS, if you've never used Linux before, I mean, this is super user friendly. A lot of these Linux operating systems that are coming to the table nowadays just make it really easy to get into and know exactly what to do. Uh, we've got some customization with the desktop itself. I've set it up to look like this, but you know, there are other ways to do it. Kind of gives off a little bit of a Mac vibe. The Pop Shop. Really awesome here. Super easy to download thousands of useful applications, games, and emulators without ever having to hit terminal. So we've got a little section here for audio, communication, fun and games. Just bring up the list here. We can kind of go through or you could do a search from the top. So let's say we wanted to download a really awesome photo editing application known as GIMP. Run a search from the top. Right here. Install. Give it a few seconds, and remember, I'm on Ethernet right now. These boards don't come with Wi-Fi built in, but we've got those two 2.5 gigabit ports, and it's really quick. So now that we've got it installed, we can head right here to our application menu. Our library home is just everything we've got installed here. Also have an office section, system, utilities, but the one we just downloaded was GIMP. So for being such a small form factor, low powered x86 SPC, I mean, I've actually been really impressed with the performance here. Uh, one thing I did notice was without any tweaks in Firefox, trying to watch 4K video does lag quite a bit. There are some fixes we could do with Firefox, but I just went ahead and installed Google Chrome. So if we just go over to YouTube. I'll find a 4K demo. And we'll go with this one right here. Full screen. Make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. And we'll hit play. And I'm going to tell you, most of the time when I do these tests on these smaller x86 boards or mini PCs, I always get much better performance with 4K video playback in Windows versus Linux. But with this, it's a little bit different. We're getting better performance over here. Not exactly sure if it's the drivers that Pop! OS is using or not, but it does handle 4K really well. So with that out of the way, I want to move over to some gaming. And, uh, you know, when it comes to gaming in Linux now, we've got Proton to work with. So we can basically enable this from Steam, just like the Steam Deck is doing, and play our favorite games that weren't natively supported by Linux in the first place. Now, we've got a lower-end CPU, so I wanted to go with some low-end stuff. Here we have Dirt 3, medium settings, 900p. And I will tell you that in Windows, I can set this to high at 1080 and still get a really good frame rate out of it. We are looking at a little less performance over here, but that's kind of a given. The next two games we're going to test are just native Linux games, so you don't need to use Proton or Steam Play or anything to run these. We've got Left 4 Dead, high settings, 1080p, we can get an average over 90 FPS, and I expected this was going to run really well. Been on the market for a while, lots of optimizations have been done, and the last one I've got here is CSGO. I actually didn't think we were going to get great performance out of it, but it is playable. So we're at 720p, low settings, and by the end of this, I had an average of 67 FPS. I mean, we're right there on the edge, and with V-Sync on, we can lock this at 60 and have a pretty decent time with it. So there's definitely a lot of PC games that we'll be able to play on this little board, but what about emulation? Well, that's the next thing we're going to test here. We're going to go with uh, PSP, and I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Basically, there's only one game we really need to test here, just to check the performance out, and that's God of War. So we've got Ghost of Sparta here, I also tested Chains of Olympus. We're at 2x resolution, using the Vulcan back in, and it's locked at 60 FPS. So if we're able to play these harder to emulate games at 2x, the easier stuff can easily go up to 4 and even 5x depending on the game. And the game itself felt really smooth. Now, anytime I boot this up in Windows, I always get a few stutters at the beginning. But with this, like I mentioned, I mean, it was just kind of locked right there at 60 across the board. So we're good to go with PSP emulation on the Odroid H3+. So let's go ahead and take it up a notch. And we're going to move over to the Dolphin emulator for some GameCube and Wii. 
Starting off with a little bit of Wii emulation, Dolphin Emulator, 720p, Vulcan back in, Sonic Colors, this game did natively run at 30fps and that's what we got here. And at that 720p resolution, the game looks awesome, but you know, this isn't the hardest one to emulate, so uh, we're going to move over to F-Zero GX on one of the hardest tracks here, Fire Field. And for this, I did have to take the resolution down to native, so we're not at 720p with this one. But we're still using that Vulcan back in, and I gotta say, this is some impressive performance. I really wish we could have hit 720p with this one, but unfortunately, there just wasn't enough juice here. And the final emulator I wanted to test out on this board running Linux was PS2 using PCSX2. This is the development build, so we do have access to Vulcan. We've got Gran Turismo 4 here at the native resolution. And every once in a while, I do notice that FPS dip a bit down to around 55, but I'm getting much better PS2 emulation out of Linux than I did with Windows on this board. And I've got one more PS2 game to test here, and that's going to be God of War 2. So we're using the same exact settings, native resolution, Vulcan back end, and upscaling Gran Turismo 4 or God of War 2 was kind of impossible. I did try to go up to 720p. But the easier to emulate stuff like Crash Bandicoot can even run at 1080 on this little board. So yeah, the new Odroid H3 Plus does handle Linux quite well. I personally haven't tested an Arch build on here, but if there's interest, I could do a video running Manjaro or something. Just let me know in the comments below. I wanted to go with Pop OS because I've been messing around with Arch for a long time now, and I just kind of wanted to move over to something different for this one. If you're interested in seeing how Windows 11 performs on this little board, link for that video will be in the description, and I'll also leave some links to Hard Kernel's website in case you want to learn more, but if there's anything else you want to see running on the Odroid H3+, Plus, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.